If f is a linear function and f of 0.1 is equal to 11.5 and f of 0.4 is equal to negative 5.9, find an equation for the function. Alrighty then. So what we first need to do is we need to understand how to interpret this, these two pieces. So we know we have two different pieces to the uh, problem. And what I want you to memorize, and I got this down here, although it's technically not like technically correct, it's I think it works beautifully. Uh, to help organize how you view this, right? How I want you to view this is I want you to view this as f of x equaling y. And I want to do that for both, f of x equaling y. So essentially, if you, if you notice the similarity here between these two, I'm basically telling you, or you're basically, not I'm not telling you, but you're figuring it out. I'm basically showing you that this value is the x value and this value is the y value. And again, same thing here. This is the x and then this is the y. So wait a minute. I have, so you mean to tell me that I'm given two xy values, one xy value here and another xy value there? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. And if you have an xy value, what does xy together kind of mean in terms of linear functions? That means a coordinate, right? You know coordinates are written x comma y. So what they're telling you here simply is a coordinate, right? The coordinate for this is basically 0 0.1 comma 11.5. And the coordinate for this is basically 0 0.4 uh, comma, excuse me, negative 5.9. So I have two points. Okay. That's the first thing. So here's the two points. Let's call this x1, let's call this y1, and let's call this x2, and let's call it y2, okay? Now, <clears throat> what does it mean to find an equation for the function? Well, first, if it's a linear function, what's the general form of a linear function? You know this, right? That y is equal to mx plus b. To find an equation that you might say, well, great, I found the equation, I'm done. Well, not exactly, right? Because linear equations this is the general form, but linear equations, all linear equations are defined by their slope and their y-intercept. So what they mean when they say find an equation for the function, they really mean find the slope of the function and the y-intercept. And then just plug it in. Not really sure what that noise was, but just plug it on into the formula. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the slope and the y-intercept. And I'm going to highlight them, all right, in this equation, m and b. Now you might already say, ooh, ooh, ooh I know, I know. I have two points, I could find the slope by using the slope formula, and that would be 100% correct. All right, so let's do that first. So let's take this, I'm just gonna move it over here, let's take this and plug it into our slope formula of y2 minus y1, all divided by x2 minus x1. All right, I defined y2 to be negative 5.9 minus then my y1 value of 11.5, okay? And now let's do it for x2, right? x2 I defined as 0.4 minus now x1 of 0 0.1. Okay, great. I'm gonna continue it on up here now. The slope is then going to be equal to, so you can take out your calculator for this, negative 5.9 minus then 11.5. So what do you get? Negative 17.4, right? 17.4, and that's all divided by the denominator, and you can plug that into the calculator too, right? That's gonna be 0 0.3. And what I'm going to do here, since I'm dealing with decimals and stuff like that, I'm just going to try to find the uh, answer, like exact answer, okay? So we'll take negative 17.4 divided by 0.3, and we get negative 58. Beautiful, negative 58. All right, so negative 58. That's the slope. All right. Now, if that's the slope, I know one of the keys, right? Now i got to find out what the y-intercept is. So how do we do that? Well... The answer lies actually in the formula itself. Y is equal to mx plus b. Remember, anytime you have an equation, and if you can figure out three of the variables, you can always solve algebraically for the, th for the fourth, for the missing one, okay? So the question is, do we know those three? Well, we actually do, all right? We definitely know the slope. I mean, we just found it, right? That should be apparent. But then you might say, well, what's the y and what's the x? Well, remember, on any linear line, Here's your, here's your axis, here's the linear line. Any point on this line can be plugged in for y 
and for x. Any point, okay? Any point, because these points have the same slopes and the same y-intercepts. They're all along the same line. So basically, what I'm saying is that you were given two points. You can choose either one of them and plug them in. doesn't matter to me what you choose. I'm going to choose the first one just because there's no negative in it. So the y value here of the first one was 11.5. That's going to be equal to the slope value. We found that to be negative 58. Multiply that then by the x value, which was 0.1. And then add that to b. So now, doing a little math, this is 11.5 will be equal to now negative 5.8. You can plug that into the calculator if you need. And then I'm simply going to add the 5.8 on over, right? Okay. And here we go. So now B will be equal to 17.3, right? 17.3. And why don't we just double check just to make sure? Okay, good. 17.3. All right. So that is the Y intercept. Now, as I had mentioned, if we can figure out the slope and the Y intercept, we know the equation of the line because remember, a linear line is defined by its slope and its y-intercept. What does that even mean, by the way? Well, basically that means this, that if I were to draw a linear line, could we agree that this line should have a different formula than this line? Right? I mean, it's on a different point of the graph, right? And they differ not because their slope is different, their slope is the same. They differ because on this one, the y-intercept was here, and now on that one, the y-intercept is there. So they're different. Okay, they can also be defined by the slope itself, right? So we can see as this changes, not only does the y-intercept change in this particular picture, but also the slope is changing, right? So that's what defines a linear line, the slope and the y-intercept. So now all I need to do is take these pieces and put them together. So y will equal the slope value of negative 58x plus 17.3. 17, whoops plus 17.3. And if you needed, you can convert that to a fraction, right? The 17.3, we can do like just the math function. We can go one, and that would be about 173 over 10, but don't, don't worry about it. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please help us out and subscribe. All right. Uh, we appreciate it very much. And uh, if you found this helpful, your friends who might be taking the same class might also, if you wouldn't mind Send them our way. We appreciate it. Have a great day.